Welcome, everybody, to the Harsh Review of Film and TV Podcast. This is episode 29, your science fiction movie special. My name is Sean, and with me is my brother, Ryan. Hey, everybody. How's it going out there? And back one more week uh, from last week's uh, Star Wars episode is the one and only Matt from Not For Human Consumption Podcast. What's going on, Matt? Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me back, and congrats on 29 episodes. Yeah, thank you. That's thank a, you. That's a lot of work. It is. It is. Yeah, so if folks don't know, uh, Matt's a good friend uh, good friend of mine and a good friend of the podcast. He was on uh, probably about 15 episodes ago. We did a doubleheader of uh, Batman, and last week we just kind of chewed the fat around a little bit of Star Wars and Star Wars fans, uh, State of the Union, so to speak. Um, but for those <laughs> who don't know you, t- tell them a little bit about yourself and your podcast. I'm Matt. I am one of the non-hosts to our four-host show <laughs> where we drink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God damn it! Where we basically just hang out every uh, weekend, drink, talk movies, games, life, everything, ridiculous stuff, and it comes out every Tuesday. Yeah. Not for NFHC human consumption. Pod, yeah, not for human consumption. NFHCpodcast.com. Get it all from there. Yeah, good. It's a good show. If you definitely uh, enjoy this one, you want something a little bit more loose and raunchy, uh, I definitely find it's a good mix from some of the uh you know serious podcasts to this and that. It's a it's a I, lot of fun. I would consider it at times as not safe for work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but not safe is in the name. It was thought about ahead of time. <laughs> you maybe have like a sixty second stretch where it's like I could play this on speakers and be okay. Yeah, you know, we're uh, a lot of us are musicians in different bands and play with uh, play around town in other states and stuff. So we just you know hang out, drink, and talk like you're at a bar, basically. And you guys are uh, based out of Phoenix, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, nice. Right on. Welcome back, Ryan. Welcome back, Matt. Uh, so this week is Hi. another special. We're going to really just be talking about nothing but science fiction movies, which ones we love, which ones we hate. Uh, I really wanted to kind of have this discussion because science fiction movies haven't really been the the main topic for a lot of the stuff that Ryan and I have discussed. We definitely have some of our favorites we've already mentioned, if you've, you're familiar with our past 28 episodes. So you might hear a little bit of that again. Uh, this is a little bit more casual and informal. Uh, so before we kind of just start talking about like why we love sci-fi movies and which ones are our favorite, I want to kind of establish uh, different categories of science fiction. Uh, movies typically can kind of fit into these five categories. Uh, we've got the hard science fiction movies, which kind of extrapolates, you know, from modern science, emphasizes more of like scientific detail and accuracy. Uh, you know, Isaac Asimov is like an example, something very, very specific and more real, I guess. You then you got like your soft science fiction movies, which isn't like soft core. It's more emphasizes soft like, core. yeah, soft core. Uh, <laughs> that, that's more with an emphasis on like social issues and issues of personal identity. Uh, you could find something like Star Trek and television. Um, sometimes it can be categorized that, which I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but, and then you got your space operas, which is clearly like your star Wars, uh, big epic scales, big conflicts, big heroes, uh, a huge, you know, typically focuses more towards, uh, people in a youth mentor relationship, uh, villains that people hate, uh, very, very grandiose in a lot of ways. Um, uh, so your last two, you're looking at like alternate history, which kind of, takes a point from the past uh, rather than from today and then takes a different path. And so that might be like what could be. Uh, those could be more of like your dystopian type of uh, science fiction uh, films. Uh, and then finally, you're looking at like your your strong dystopia movies, which are 
they reject like that idea that scientific advance uh, will bring out a superior civilization. Uh, they're often dreamed up with a lot of various realities. Uh, a movie that might be dystopia would be like uh, Mad Max. Uh, Blade Runner is another example of that. Uh, so those are typically like a sci-fi movie typically fits in one of those buckets, although they could have characteristics of each of those. Uh, and what was interesting about wanting to do this episode is I know Ryan likes sci-fi. We've talked a lot about it. I see him more as like a classical sci-fi kind of guy. Um, he's one of the ones that likes a lot more like the pioneers and the new things that kind of come out, the, the new bold ideas that, that are coming into movies. And then while Matt, I think, appreciates those movies, I see him a little bit more on the... Um, I don't know if modern is the right way, but maybe a little bit more of the heady, true science fiction-y uh, flicks. And that's like the difference between like a Star Wars fans and Star Trek fans, where Star Wars is science fiction, but it's it's a little more fantasy focused. And then Star Trek is a little bit more, you know, there's real concepts and real this is possible type of stuff. Um, gotcha. You know what I mean? Like I, I just, uh, and that could be way off. So that's what we're going to find out. Um and for me, I kind of feel like I float a little bit in the middle. Um, while I, I appreciate the classics, I don't really, I'm not drawn back to them a whole lot. And um, I appreciate modern sci-fi or a little bit more uh, uh, hard science movies, uh, but don't have a really a strong preference. Uh, but that's just my impressions based off of just knowing these guys for a long time. Uh, so without, you know, messing around anymore, let's just get into it. Let's talk about science fiction movies, the ones we love and hate, what makes them kick ass, what makes them suck. Yes, uh, sir. Yes. So let's start off with the best science fiction movie of all time. The one and only avatar. Ugh. Yes. Let's get this off the table. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it. I've been Thanks waiting for you guys. Uh, yeah. Congrats on 29. <laughs> this is episodes. an ambush. Um, this is an ambush, Matt. Yeah. You can check me out on nfhcpodcast.com. We're actually going to spend the whole episode <laughs> talking about avatar. Fuck no. you guys. I'm out. <laughs> I mentioned like Click three or Matt, four episodes hello? ago that next time you're on, I was like, I got to, I got to get Matt going uh, on avatar. We've God. been saving in the discussion. So yeah. Well, so, good job. Cause it like completely, <laughs> I'm gonna go. Yeah, I didn't Rage mention quit. anything about this. So you just hear like off mic, like from feet away, shit slamming in the background of me screaming. I, I thought you could hear Damn the sound it. of like the headset getting ripped off your head, you know. And then, uh, so, but for the record, Avatar is the, the most profitable science fiction movie of all time. Uh, yeah, well, you know, yeah, box office dollars. But it, it's not a great movie by any means. It was more of a technical feat at best. The Nazis uh, well, had a lot of troops, coming, man. I don't so. know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> four more on the way, Matt. So Get ready. Unanimously, I, I think we're all not fans of it. But why does it suck? I really want to know. It's awful acting and storytelling. And Sigourney Weaver was rad inside of it. I thought, yeah. it, looked, I thought it looked okay, but the 3D, is seem, 3D just seems forced. I wish it would go away. Yeah, it's just a way to jack up the ticket price. It doesn't really add value to the story or the visuals in a whole lot of ways. I have think not, it's worth him doing all these extra movies like no. in the same vein. I mean, why he's doing four, right, or three more? Well, he is doing four more. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I mean, here's here's an example. So Transformers, which which that's sci-fi, right? Would you call that sci-fi movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. So I thought the first Transformers was fun. But it wasn't a great movie by any means. And it, and it was a definitely much different visually than I would have preferred. I wanted a more classic Transformers. Anyways, that movie cashed in and killed it with nostalgia. And then it, it wasn't even a good movie. Um, made a lot of money. Then they continued to make them, which still made a lot of money. But they're so bad. So like, how does a movie make a lot of money but truly suck? And I think it's the marketing and it's the fandom that the fan base that was already pre-built because it was already a pre-established uh, IP. So I think Avatar was one of those that the marketing and it was James Cameron's name attached to it and all these things that brought a lot of people. It cashed in and it was kind of like, gotcha. But <laughs> yeah. the director Take doesn't it. see it that way. So it's very to, possible that's not what he thinks it is. I don't know. 
to be fair with the Transformers thing, that I mean, it, they're just bringing a cartoon to the screen in live action. So, like, to kind of think that they're going to be amazing is kind of, I don't know. Yeah, you don't expect it to be like some cinematic masterpiece, but yeah, you're like, I want to watch robots punch each other in the goddamn mouth. I think it was maybe maybe <laughs> more on the uh, racist bumblebee, the <laughs> emphasis on the human characters in those movies that really take away from the story. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know. Avatar just isn't that great. I checked out the. <laughs> I'm stuck on the Transformers thing because you ambushed me with Avatar, but I checked out of that franchise, the live action version, when that construction robot dragged its wrecking balls up a pyramid from its between its <laughs> legs. I was like, oh, that, yeah. Get out of here. I know. But, it's just a little overkill. It, back on the Avatar tip, um, <laughs> dude, I don't know. The fucking acting is awful in that goddamn thing. Yeah. I haven't seen one movie where 3D added to it would made it like oh this that really helps this whole thing it's like in in the case of that movie it just distracted you from how bad the acting is maybe yeah because it was probably the first decent 3d movie right probably yeah. i don't know <laughs> that was kind of what, what this whole pitch was i watched it three times in the theater because um a little medical history i have a fucked up optic cable in my left eye to where I can't see properly out of it. So old version of 3d glasses, the red and blue lens didn't, didn't work. Hmm. So 3d was hot back then. This was the big movie to do it. So we went and saw it without 3d the first time. And I was like, this movie's fucking garbage, but I'm going <laughs> to, so we went with <laughs> win me over again. We went yeah. to, no, we went to, we went to the non 3d version first. So non -host, I can test non 3d. We got it. So I can test out the three, the new way they do 3d in a theater. And if it didn't work, I would at least know what the fuck was happening on the screen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. kind of like and I remember I talking to you about it. this. Yeah. And it turns out the new way they do 3d works completely fine on my dumb fucking disability <laughs> so and then we then we took my wife's little brother one more time after that just because he wanted to see it oh that was nice so this thing shit in my face three times and took thirty dollars <laughs> from me or more <laughs> that, that took a lot more than that yeah oh my Jeez. god so all right so, so I, I earned my hate i think yeah yeah, it's just it's right. Smurfs in space, dances with wolves all over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no nothing original about it. I mean, the thing I will give it is it had good art direction. At least it had uh, original visuals in a lot of ways. But it's just with things yes. you don't really care about. I mean, I don't know. I just <laughs> didn't care about anything their hair. in the movie. But so now that we started off on a high note, uh, go ahead and uh, somebody take the reins, throw something out there. Name a <laughs> name a movie. Get I'll, in give there, you one, I'll give you one that's kind of a classic for me. Uh, and I remember this from being a kid and growing up. And I, I recently saw it in the theaters again. And I uh, still love it. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, that's not on my list. Nice. Not on mine yeah. either. Yeah, classic Steven Spielberg. You know, I have a kind of a, not like a full on like obsession with aliens, but I, I am mildly intrigued, I guess you can say. And <laughs> this movie really, really hits that. Like, <laughs> The way the aliens look in the end is, is kind of like, uh, stereotypical, you know, but it's right? a great, yeah, but it's a great film. I think, uh, Spielberg at the time, and he still does feels very strongly about this. Um, you know, kind of the movie you wanted to make after he got success from jaws and went straight to this film after that. So, um, still powerful, you know, um, still very cool to see in the theater. If it's, it was re-released, uh, for it's, I think it was his 40th anniversary last September. Um, and I got to see Damn. that and it's, it's still wonderful. It's, you know, it still looks good. Um, some great performances overall. It, it just, I think it hits a kind of a classic science fiction movie for me. Yes. That's a good classic. Yeah. And it's, it's often under the radar for a lot of people because it doesn't get that kind of press. Uh, yeah. I remember seeing it when I was a lot younger and was just kind of like, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, yeah. not a whole lot of payoff at the end with the aliens and their little music, you know, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you didn't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. Um, but then you see it older, you kind of get the whole, <laughs> the whole story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it has like the big bass note. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. And it was probably yeah. one of the more um, 
modern alien movies that kind of started a whole lot more uh flew yeah. flew under the radar box office wise wasn't a huge hit for for steven um but it is a good brave movie yeah nice good pick yeah good that's, pick. that's good my pick. first one no, thank you no thank objections you. I'm a fan of like sci-fi movies from that era, even if I like them or not, just the aesthetics of it and the way shit was filmed. Yeah. Like, I don't know the seventies. Like they were still filling it out. I mean, I'll throw another one out there. Uh, 2001 space odyssey, which that's kind of like the, maybe that whether you hate it or not, it's kind of the dividing line between, you know, everything that came before that science fiction was kind of cheesy. You know, you, you could see the zippers on the backs of like the, the monsters and, Everything was obviously done on the set. And then, you know, 2001 came along. It's like three and a half, four years in the making. And then that kind of set a precedent, which a lot of directors after that, you know, making Star Wars or whatever, pointed at that movie and says, yeah, I wanted to kind of best that or, you know, try to fit that that mode. And so I think it's that kind of film as well should be, you know, at least appreciated for setting that standard that others would follow. Have you sat through that movie, Matt? I try. Uh <laughs> but like well, once every two years, it looks amazing, but I just can't get through the the storytelling. There really isn't a strong story. No, and I think that's there, the, the, it's not all about story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I fall I fall asleep a lot. And then I wake up to like monkeys doing some shit. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll sleep by like two minutes. Cause that's like the first 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, well that 20 minutes feels like a day and a half. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> and that's, I just, I, that's what I recently saw in the theater too. And, and like people were laughing at that part. I thought it was hilarious. Dude, so <laughs> it, it was like, you know, it's like dead quiet the whole movie, but then people so, were sitting there laughing at that that people give um some of the old star trek movies some shit because there's like the joke in all those movies of like this is the ship porn part when like they finally see the enterprise after they've been on planet or in a space dock Uh uh-huh and it's like they're going up the elevator and the song's like look at the fucking ship (laughs) (laughs) so 2001 has the longest fucking spaceship passing the screen i was like oh my god get it on oh, yeah go <laughs> yeah. fucking go we get it yeah it's one of those movies <laughs> different kind of movie i mean it's really trippy too so it's like i think it was made with that audience in mind yeah a little bit yeah I, I, it's one of those movies where you know somebody who hasn't seen it and they've heard about it and they're like oh cool should i watch it and you go I don't know if I could recommend it. Eh, like I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna attach my brand to that movie because it's not what you think. <laughs> you gotta you know that at me. you're watching. More, it's more like something that would be playing at like an art museum, you know. And you watch it with yeah. that kind of crowd. It's, it's. I, I don't know. I've had it on in the background because I, I don't know. Maybe it's from my dumb optic cable issue, but I don't like having a bunch of lights on around me. So I have, I have just shit on. TVs in the rooms I'm in at all times where I live. It looks and like I have a, put that, yeah, it looks like the Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer in your apartment. <laughs> I have put that movie on in the background, and I'm like, that looks fucking awesome. And then I sit down to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I don't know. Um, um, Kubrick movies, I just kind of check out on. Yeah, and they all they all look great, but I just have a hard time getting through them. It's it's the uh it's kind of like a solo guitar player, right? You know, like a Steve Vai or something. He's like a guitar player for guitar players, not really a guitar player for like people who like music. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he, <laughs> sorry. And so yeah. I feel like 2001 is one of those movies for like that was made for directors. Um, it wasn't yeah, necessarily yeah. made to be consumed at that level, but it definitely does put out a lot of um, contemporary ideas and t- the way it deals with AI and a lot of the creativity yeah. and then how you interpret things, the visuals. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff there, but I definitely knew Ryan was going to bring that one along. I know he loves that one. No, I, th- uh, I think it's, I think it's awesome and I do respect it. It's just, yeah. you know, buckle up s- storytelling wise. Yeah. Come, come so on. What are you, what are you, what are you doing, Matt? <laughs> Matt, I've enjoyed the parodies of that quite a bit on I'm Futurama. Afraid, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. When the the new ship AI on Futurama falls in love with Bender and he has to yeah. unpop all the soda caps to turn her off in the <laughs> God damn it. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, if 2001 isn't your bag, what is? Uh I think my favorite sci-fi one of all time is actually a remake. 
of a Russian movie called Solaris. Oh, that, oh yeah. that's on my list. That's yeah, the, two, the the 2002 remake. Yeah, with that Clooney, one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Clooney didn't bobblehead his way through this adventure. <laughs> that's right. The well, bobble- he's, in, he's in space, too, <laughs> so you'd think like that gravity would pull Yeah, his head he's got a little less gravity little on more. his head to I flip I forgot all about that. <laughs> little bobblehead. Yeah, yeah, the soundtrack oh. is rad in that movie. And yeah, yeah this- dude, that's one of my favorite composers, Clint Mansell. It's rad. Yeah, his, did you did you see this in the theater? Or did you do you, do you remember? Or did you stumble across it like as a rental or something? An accidental rental from a Hollywood video back when there was brick and mortar rental oh, yeah. places. Accidental, two thousand two. What were you? Uh, what were you trying to get? I grabbed it because of the cover. Oh, I gotcha. remember also watching the the fucking weird Russian one as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's a long like, one too, right? Yeah, and it's you know it's yeah. slow and <laughs> yeah. That, that that chick gets a little weird and you just dump her out an airlock. I I identify yeah, with that. <laughs> Bye, fam. I got I got I got shit to do. That's Dude, but, you know that's funny you mentioned that because like truly think about it. Like if you're in space and you're in a relationship where it just doesn't work, <laughs> like either person can like go. I can get rid of you really easy in this situation. Like you don't have yeah. that chance on Earth. You got to deal with all kinds of logistics and you know. But in space, it's like what out of here Dude, but like know. the the See pacing the pacing was was really good for it being a slow movie it like it just held the line perfectly and i think the soundtrack has a lot to do with that like it the, yeah it keeps you going the tension you're like floating on that weird arpeggio synth as it's like transitioning you through these slow scenes with like the really good cinematography and lighting i don't know it was really really cool to me yeah and i also like the the way that they um, they're they're designed for what the future would be like. It wasn't extravagant. Like the sets were tasteful, no. minimalist. Yeah, really tasteful. Like Mass Effect. There you go. Yeah, nice. good good. Pull. Which that which a lot of, which a lot of that aesthetic was I was talking about when um Ryan was talking about two thousand one is a lot of those and uh, Close Encounters, but the, a lot of the old aesthetics from like the seventies sci fi was the cool clean like future was created from the seventies. And when they implement that in today's stuff, I really appreciate that. That's a good, that's a good carryover. Yeah. 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 That's, um, that's a good, good pull there. I'll check that off my list. I put Solaris parentheses, new one. (laughs) Just to make (laughs) it. 2002 (laughs) remake. bro. Yeah. I prefer the Russian cut. Um, all right. So here's one of the ones I have that when I saw it, um, I was like, this is probably one of my favorite sci-fi movies I've seen in a long time. And that would be district nine. Yeah. I got that on mine. Yeah. That's a good one. And not only do you say you're a fucking prawns, man. Um, (laughs) we, we should all do a podcast one time. Yeah. Yeah, Whoa, bro. We're (laughs) syncing up here. Uh, I think what's cool about it is it tells a good story of the (laughs) character. I like how they kind of fuse, you know, you know, the, the robot element with the alien element and like just the, the dirty future where there's like this district of people and why it's like that, the presence of this ship that, you know, there's all these cool Ominous. elements to it, but uh, Neil uh, Blumkin or no, Bl- uh, Blumkamp, 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 Blumkamp. Yeah. Blum- I know it wasn't Blumkin. That stick a shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know he, he, uh, uh, he definitely was kind of like in that, uh, it's very original, and I wish we saw more from him. Uh, he hasn't quite delivered uh, since then. Uh, I really Fuck wish you, that. D. Word. Yeah, I know. Other what do you than do, uh, Chappie and uh, Elysium. Yeah, Elysium isn't too bad. I mean, it's entertaining. It, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it's just because it's Matt mine. Damon. That's my issue with that one. But it's not a bad movie. I enjoy it. I need to watch it again. But uh, I liked I like his style. I think it's, he's got a very unique point of view on like this doesn't feel like it's too far in the future. Uh, no, and that's what I like about it. It's not going too far, so it still has a lot of connections to today. Um, and it's it's like a, a political message, but it's not really too heavy handed. I mean, he, he's filming yeah, it from South Africa. It's got you know elements of apartheid and. Uh, you know, just the class system. So I think it's cool to integrate that uh, 
with everything else and still make it like a really original science fiction movie. I think it's one of the better, better, like new ones. I totally agree with you, Sean. Yeah. When I, yeah. that we, that we've seen, I went to comic con, I think in, um, I don't know the year that movie came out, like before it came out or right around there, I want to say maybe Oh seven, Oh eight. I don't know. Oh nine, somewhere around there. Um, I can't remember. Uh, but they had like the, this huge, like tanks, like these armored vehicles, probably several of them all done up. Like they took it from the set over there that were all, you know, district nine. And they had like the aliens with like the little lines through them. And yeah, like Like downtown San Diego had a lot of that art around it that kind of had that vibe. And so I thought it was just really cool. Like great art direction on that, on that whole movie. He made that movie for next to no money. Didn't Peter Jackson help him with the CGI? Yeah, yeah, Weta, so. Weta Digital yeah, st- Weta. stepped up. Yeah, he kind of did that movie as a fuck you to Microsoft for um, ditching him. He was supposed to do the Halo movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's and right. the, that's right. the, the and Halo Peter, movie right? fell through. Yeah, him and Peter Jackson were going to do that. So Peter Jackson and Neil Blumkin fucking went together <laughs> as a giant fuck you. Blumkin. Look what we did for next to no money. Yeah. I think you guys are saying his name wrong. Oh, uh, Blumkamp. Blumkamp. Not Blumpkin. Yeah. You call it a Blumpkin. You want to look that up on the internet? And see what it <laughs> no, really means? that's why I was saying that. <laughs> well, I, I can read it for you if you want. Yeah. Well, Blumpkin well, is the. Oh, well, here I go. The right. actor performing. <laughs> right, the yeah. actor, per, Hit me. actor performing fellatio while the recipient is defecating in a toilet. He should change his name. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Neil Blumpkin. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I kind of. I mean, I the guy's our appreciate... age. You know, what I mean, it's a it's a kick ass. Yeah. Uh, at least my age. Ryan, yeah. Ryan's yeah. the older one here. Yeah, not that older, but You're pretty. Old. I appreciate a good uh, fuck you story to somebody turning off yeah. a project on somebody and like, oh yeah, we'll check this out, and it's probably way more popular than that movie. Yeah, it's ever original, been. anyway. Yeah, he he's yeah. just done a, a lot of shorts since that movie in Elysium came out and in Chappie, and then nothing but a bunch of shorts because he spun his wheels on the Alien project. Um, oh. And Ridley Scott eventually said, like, no, I'm going to do this. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't have enough flute. Yeah, and just took everything away. <laughs> and so um, now he's doing pre-production on a, a movie called Greenland, which is a thriller uh, there's really no details or anything like it. It's going to have Chris Evans in it, so Captain America. Uh, other than that, that's all we really know about it. He's directing it. He didn't write it. So uh, we'll see if he eventually comes out with anything new, but uh, I really liked it. Uh, he has a lot of potential. Yeah, well, the Elysium is his follow-up I really liked, and then Chappie was the goddamn band ruined it. It's I know, and Hugh Jackman's little, for that uh, stupid fucking band. His mullet. <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah he's got like this little rat tail mullet thing going on yeah <laughs> uh, yeah that band yeah that was horrible that movie sucked i was really mad at it yeah well there you go <laughs> all right ryan you're up uh this is one i i loved it, not this is a science fiction movie but is a movie in general uh ex machina oh good pick it's on my list yeah one of mine is it's well. Click. I mean, it's almost like, you know, the way it's done, it's almost like a play. It's like there's really only like three or four characters there's in this four movie. Four people in it. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it, it, it's really not just like science fiction. and There's a lot of tension. So it's kind of works as a suspense film as well. It's very well done. Very well written. It, it definitely got a lot of like commentary. Um, very excited to see what else Alex Garland's going to be doing after Annihilation, which is another movie I loved. Um so definitely like a great addition to this genre. Um, just kind of, cre- you know, Ex Machina, the first time I saw it, really kind of creeped me out. And it's like, yeah, this stuff could really happen. This could, yeah. you know, it's not, and, too far re- it's not too far removed from what we already know. And it's a completely different dynamic from Poe Dameron and General Hux from The Last Jedi. Right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was blown away Correct. the last week. I think my wife was like, do you know that guy from Ex Machina is fucking Hux? I was like, oh. <gasps> You're he right. looks different. You're right. Yeah. No, yeah. he, he he's looks in some like other little... movies too. <laughs> yeah, he shows up looking different a couple times. So, Crazy. so you mentioned Alex Garland because I I think he's probably going to be like the next big thing to tell sci fi movies and kind of uh, uh, just original stories. Um, and you mentioned uh, Annihilation. 
Uh, I, yeah. I don't know, Matt, did you see that one yet? I haven't seen it yet. I, th- oh. I think you'll like it. I mean, it's definitely got a lot of 2001 inspirational type elements in it, minus the monkeys. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But it's it, not it's as not long. The next gener- it's not the next generation, so I'm not watching things right now. It was yeah, just an interesting kind of release because, <laughs> you know, like they said, that European audiences wouldn't get it. So it didn't get like that international yeah, it release. it over there. Yeah, so it's like, but it's like that kind of movie actually would, I think, do better in those, you know, that, yeah. those fields. It's kind of like an art film. Uh, it definitely, it's it's adapted from a book, and we've already talked about this, but you know, not really sticks to the to the book, which is great. So Garland, we already know he's a writer; he's done other stuff before. It's like he just kind of ran with it and made it his own, which is really cool. But looks great. It's it, I watched it again recently. Love it. It's like the equivalent of a cover song, you know, where a band has their yeah. hit and then another band does their interpretation of it. And the, and the author liked that movie. What I think is cool about it is, uh, well, what sucks uh, as far as the distribution goes is it was released in the screens in America, but went straight to Netflix in Europe and it was actually more successful in Europe. Um, and it just kind of shows you that a lot of these studios are not wanting to take these risks on these kind of movies. And these are exactly the kind of things like why you go to the movie theater. Yeah. Uh, so it's a great one. I mean, I've read his books um, even back with when the beach before that was even a movie that Danny Boyle did I even read the Tesseract, which is a pretty trippy book of his. Uh, but the other one on my list from him was 28 days later. Um, he wrote that yeah. as well. Uh, and that's another Danny Boyle one. Um, that movie's rad. I don't know. It's probably the only zombie movie I enjoy. He wrote another one too. That, that should be on our lists. Um, are you talking about, uh, um, dread sunshine? Oh, sunshine. Yeah. Oh, that that sunshine is, on my, is on my list. That's number two. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good one. That's really cerebral type of film. You know, same guy. And no, and, and so sunshine, another Danny Boyle movie, Danny Boyle also did the beach and he did 28 days later. So he really, uh, you know, connected with his work. So, um, so 28 days later, it's been a while since I've seen that one. It's, it's all black and white, right? No, no, no. The, the, it's uh, the the color severely like degraded. Though. That's right. That's yeah. right. I kept it's uh it's like seven kind of. Yeah, that's that's true. That, that oversaturation. And then so I think it's a pretty I like that take on zombies a little bit or just that approach how he did it. Um, yeah. And then sunshine. So uh, that's on all of our lists, right? Is that on yours, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on so, mine as well. Captain America and it's awesome with the, the scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's the, here's an, here's an issue I have. I, Basically. Uh, here's an issue I have with it. Not necessarily with the movie directly, but I watched, um, didn't make my list. Uh, I watched this a couple of weeks ago, event horizon. Oh yeah. That's on my list. Um, uh, yeah, it, you know, it didn't really hold up. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen that one. It's just a little too much over the top. But the concepts, the themes are very strong um, where that's I think that's the first movie I remember where it does that whole. Let me explain how a wormhole works with a piece of paper and a pencil. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many movies oh, have done that since then? Yeah. Yep. Um, it's also the hey, there's a crew out in space and they're not responding. We're going to send you out to go find them. Right. Alien started that, didn't it? Yep. Uh, yeah. and then, so you see that theme in this movie and then shit goes I mean, bad. That, so that's also just a natural human trait. Like somebody ain't calling out. We got to call him back. We got to go get him. Yeah. But you know, you're just waiting for it to get bad. Uh, but <laughs> sunshine is almost basically like event horizon. Um, yeah. there's really not a whole lot of differences between the narratives other than the purpose or the reason I liked the creativity on the reason of what they're trying to accomplish in sunshine. I think that was a little more original in some respects. Um, but I just remember watching it kind of going like, Oh wow. I've seen sunshine plenty of times in this movie, like twice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of similarities there. So, hope- so, um, event horizon, that movie didn't age well for me, like at all. It did. It kind of, right? it kind of reminded me of those like early nineties movies that kind of just come off more as amusement park rides than actual movies. Yeah, it's like the make, it's in the Armageddon sense, like, yeah, you know, it's like Armageddon and Deep Horizon and stuff. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. On your list? No, <laughs> no. Okay, good. I'm just making sure. <laughs> uh, well, like you know, there's a bunch of mine. weird, terrible movies from that time, like Ghost Ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> yeah, like uh, ghost one dad. Gets, one no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Decent scene in Ghost Ship, real quick, and everybody's dancing, yeah. and that cable breaks and lops everybody in half. But uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other one. than that, I kind that's of like right, categorize, that's right. I I categorize that. Uh, Event Horizon as kind of it one of those movies where it's just like a bunch of scenes slammed together for like shock value instead of storytelling. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, because it doesn't really explain the motives behind a lot of the the horror elements of it, and that's where it kind of gets a little over the top. Like it has all this potential. And then once it starts going bad, it just gets cheesy. Um, and I think that's just how movie making kind of was in the 90s. There's not a lot of classics that come out of the 90s, unless you're talking like Shawshank Redemption type movie. Um, yeah. It reminded me a lot of that newer uh, Cloverfield movie, like now that you kind of mentioned that. Like Cloverfield Paradox and Event Horizon, very similar, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah, kind of gimmicky. Yeah. And I might have Event Horizon baggage because it kind of overshadowed a better movie called Sphere. Oh, that's a deep cut. Yeah. Oh, dude. See, I told you. I kind of, yeah, I knew Matt was going to pull some of those out. Tell me, so remind me, like, what's the premise of Sphere? Sphere, they find that. (laughs) Dude, it's been so fucking long. (laughs) Let's hear it. Come on, you got this. As he's quickly, like, Wikipedia and Sphere. Oh, yeah. Fuck this one about. I know know it's uh, Michael Crichton. That's all I know. You guys know all the names of all the people, but it had a, you know. (laughs) Yeah, okay. What was it? Sharon Stone and uh, Dennis Hoffman. I don't see. I don't. Dennis Hoffman? (laughs) You mean Dustin Hoffman? Yeah, Dustin. (laughs) Oh, is Liam Neeson in the movie, too? Yeah, name police over here. (laughs) I can't get away from William Neeson. Hello. <laughs> no, but it was yeah. kind of like the like sphere was kind of like the abyss in a sense yeah, well, where they Bill they find a uh, you know a ship underwater and it's got that fucking gold orb in it that fucking starts taking over everybody. They like warp next. Hmm. Next. next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a veto. Uh, All right. Okay. What's your next yeah. movie? Right? Yeah, the gold Keep sphere. Going. Right. You're good. You're good, Dennis Hoffman. It's not. Is it abyss? Like abyss style? Yeah, they yeah. like an alien spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean. They go down there to research what the fuck's going on. That big That's right. Gold That's right. I need, mul- molten okay. looking uh CGI orb. Yeah. Mid nineties. And they just fucking Yeah, it's a ninety eight. Yeah, they okay. is it ninety eight? Yeah. What what year was uh Event Horizon? Same year. Ah yeah. yeah. So it was like a deep impact okay. Armageddon style deal. Uh huh. No, Event Horizon was ninety seven, and then that was ninety eight. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, back to back. Everyone just kind of, everyone just kind of got it already, and they were ready yeah, to move he, on. The, the official description for Sphere on uh, IMDb <laughs> is: a spaceship is discovered under three hundred years worth of coral growth at the bottom of the ocean. Ooh. Yeah, it's also got Samuel Jackson, which we all forgot. Dude, well, he's just in everything. Oh. If you actually look at the linear notes of every movie, <laughs> ever. are you all pissed off in this movie? Oh yeah. <laughs> He's a- get this sphere off my damn ship. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't you put your hand in that sphere. The, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen either of those yeah, movies. Leaf Shriver's in the in longest it. time. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Oh, nice. Hey, guess who the helicopter pilot is in Sphere? Go for it. Um Huey Lewis. Dan- oh. Oh God. Did he, <laughs> did he leave the news at home? Sure? I know, right? <laughs> I prefer his album Sports. Yeah. <laughs> if you listen to Huey Lewis yeah, in the news. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> so, yeah, there you have it. Anyway. How'd we get on Sphere? Oh, because I've said it. I Event said Horizon. Event Horizon yeah. overshadowed right. Right. A, a deeper cut of Sphere. No, I'll check that out. Sphere is one of those movies that if you never mentioned that right now at this moment in my life, I probably would have never crossed its oh, path yeah, until sphere. I died. Yeah. You don't remember. But, uh, oh, yeah, that movie. It's a good call out. You it's don't good remember the yeah, gold like molasses. I do now. Looking... It's all coming back to me. And yeah. they like when they find it in that ship, they just stare at it and then they start like fucking going start crazy with it. Yeah. And then but it's like it turns out that it's like a future American ship or some shit. I don't know. It's fucking weird. So, All right. Yeah. Sphere. Good call out. Sphere's on Matt's list. Nice. It actually wasn't, but it got brought up because I forgot. I myself <laughs> forgot about it until Event Horizon That's a deep popped. cut, though. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to bring one in that um, I really like that uh, 
I think a lot of people would probably agree with, but you either seen it or you haven't, and that would be Children of Men. Oh yeah. Uh, doesn't make most people's lists. Um, it's one of those more realist type of sci-fi movies. It's depressing uh, as fuck. It oh, so yeah. is, but that's where I kind of like, I think Clive Owen is, uh, he had some great movies and then he had some really bad movies. He, he uh, went away, one of those man. Good movies. He did. Yeah. I think it was after that bullet time movie he did with, uh, the girl from matrix. No, two. that movie's fun. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? It was fun. It was. Oh. But that's where like it was like, okay, so he's not going to be this serious actor guy. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> he still likes to have fun. Um, well, Paul Giamatti's in that one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. the gangster. Okay. Smoke yeah. and Aces. Smoke, there you go. It's a fun movie, and they did some cool camera stuff in there. Um, this one no, was made bull- by Alfonso. Yeah, it's called Bulletproof. Kier- no, no, bulletproof. no, 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 it's not. What the fuck? No, Bulletproof's, um, that's Adam yeah, Sandler. yeah. Uh, shoot him up. <laughs> shoot him up. Shoot, shoot him up. Shoot, there that's it, it. Shoot him up. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alfonso Curion did this one. Um, it's, it's so well shot. Too. It, it, there's some, some of the a couple scenes in there. Like I'm a huge sucker for w- long takes and yeah. there's two of them in this movie that are some of the best you'll see in cinema. Um, so the, the, the one where the he's, car. yeah, the one with the car, right. And then the other one where he's like navigating the people through the town as the war is breaking out or like oh, they're man. fighting each other and the camera just falls along. It is like so good. So yeah. if you haven't seen that movie, you got to watch it again. But like Matt said, super depressing ass movie. It has one of yeah. the best, uh, like single take shots, action scenes in like all of movies though. When yeah. they're, they're trying to get the chick away from the gang, the, the the motorcycle gang or whatever that's chasing them. Yeah, and, and they're in that car yeah. and the camera's panning around and stuff. Yeah. That scene is fucking amazing. Even if you just want to go... Ye- people like coming out of the woods, shooting stuff at them. Even if you just oh, want to yeah. YouTube it real yeah. quick, it's fucking awesome. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, and like, that's that's one of the, the, the... I think it just enhances the story because you really feel the tension of what's going on where you can lose a lot of that with editing. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah, that's the one. Right, that's the nice, one where the nice. people can't breed anymore, and one chick out of the whole planet's pregnant. So they're trying to like get her to safety as much as possible. It's like the basically yeah, they want to the, get her yeah, in the right hands. So yeah, so people don't like use her as like a cash cow for babies, um, and so they want to kind of get her to the right rebels that want to protect humanity, and other people don't. So yeah, yeah, that's the one. Nice. All right. Who's up? I think I'm up. Okay. Or, you, you, yeah, okay. Uh, har- yeah. Hardcore Henry. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, Is it good? Yeah, I haven't oh. seen it either. It's with the, the fucking prawns guy, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> The same guy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> fucking prawns, man. It's, an, it's a movie <laughs> shot entirely in first person. And nice. it's action the entire time. Oh man, no, no. I think someone was on. A, I was on a plane one time, and someone was watching that next to me. You know, sometimes you just kind of have to look every now and yeah. then. Yeah, it, it was really tripping me out, but it looked cool. I, I mean, I haven't seen it, but yeah. So, uh, so tell us more. Basically, it's this dude from a like a punk band called Biting Elbows, nice. which is kind of a ref a <laughs> reference to like no imagine <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but anyway um <laughs> oh yeah, okay <laughs> he special fi- needs he filmed yeah. all of his own band's music videos in first person and they were all action shots of like you've seen it on youtube i swear you have of like this guy shooting down mafia guys in like these warehouses and he's just running yeah for his i've life. seen that and, then, and like the dog runs up yeah. and stuff yes and then, uh so yeah his movies were so impressive that a studio approached him and gave him a budget to make this movie. And they wrote hardcore Henry where this dude, it's all, it's all in Russia, but a dude wakes up being brought back from the dead as a half human, half robotic hybrid with no memory of his former life. And this woman claiming to be his wife is fucking, it's like fucking with him. Uh, It's, it's, it's all action. It's, like, <laughs> it's all first person. It never breaks the first person at all. So, but there's nice. a lot of editing and stuff, right? But there's are there a lot of long takes and stuff. Yes, there is. So that I, uh, try, I wanted to see it. I was just afraid I was going to get like motion yeah. sick from watching it. Right. No, they did. Blair Witch. They did it really well. Um, 
they monitored all that stuff. There's a, there's you know it's um, there's plenty of CGI and to help it along its way. Like I believe the beginning scene, they have to hit an escape pod that flies them down to the city. It's like way up in this like cloud, uh, like lab or something or a skyscraper. Something's really loud. Some uh, not loud. Uh, really high up. And they're falling, and he's falling with his wife, and there's just clouds everywhere. So it's there's plenty of CGI to. I think it smooths it out. But the stunt guy said that the contraption to wear all the GoPros, yeah, they filmed it with GoPros too. One the the cage that they had to put over his head. Uh-huh. He, they said it was like a a new age torture device from the Middle Ages. Oh my wow. god! Yeah, it was like <laughs> so <laughs> they had to run and do all this like parkour stuff, wearing this like torture device all over their body and head and everything i'll i'll try to send you guys a link if you want to post it in your show notes of like the contraption that makes it i'm looking at it now look at this thing it's like a gas mask type of looking it's yeah yeah it is trippy and they put gopros all over it which you know the movie came out fuck i don't remember when it came out it's like five yeah, years, 20, 2016 five years. 2015 so how, 2016 okay so then when uh um uh, Sh- Sh- Charlotte Copley, yeah. Charlito Copley, fucking prawns, man. How much is he actually in it? Like, where do you actually see him if it's first person? Is it like reflections and stuff? No, he's like, uh, the, the, is he not Henry? He's not Henry. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> he's like this weird guy that has multiple personas throughout the movie. Okay, okay. Then that makes a lot more sense. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. It's like he might be, a, I haven't watched a lot of these in a long time, so. That's a good call. I'll, I'll I'll watch that. You know the uh, I remember seeing this one, and somebody else recommended this to me. I just never got around to it. It's super fun, and um, one of the best action scenes in that movie. He also put back to his band to have a music video of. He just basically left this action scene when it starts and stops is a whole music video for his band. So the music and everything is in the movie as well. Yep. Oh, that's cool. And it's it's amazing. I don't know how they fucking did it. So check it out. Yeah, I'm check that <laughs> out. I I just love it when somebody makes movies and the craft is a different approach. Mm-hmm. Um even if the movie yeah. is good or not, if it's if it's unique with that that style, I'm into it. Yeah, so a, that's cool. Apparently he like all all his band's music videos use this. He invented the little cage that goes over the person and everything. So it caught notice. Nice. People gave good him cash. Him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ryan, take it. All right. Let me check my list here. Uh, I like Moon. I got that. I got that one. Sam Rockwell. I like Moon. It's really, it's a really trippy movie. Um, Duncan Jones, David Bowie's son. He he did this one. Um, I just like it. It's, it's really, you know, it's different because again, like Ex Machina, there's not like a lot of actors in it. So it's very self-contained. Sam Rockwell does a phenomenal job <laughs> pretty much carrying the whole movie. And then you have a uh, creepy uh, Kevin Spacey as the, you know, the, the robot on the ship or the talking yeah. robot on the ship. The robot I, did um, not have hands though. So he was safe. Uh, yeah. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. This power of suggestion, but um, yeah, I like it. It's, it's a great film. It's so great. Well, it's, great soundtrack. It's so yeah. well yeah. shot, oh, yeah. man. Uh huh. Fuck. It's that's an- where Duncan Jones is at his best, uh, at least from what we've seen so far of his. Yeah. Um, the what's the one that he uh, Muse is the no mute the second uh, yeah. Mute. Where were you guys mute. on mute? Uh, I mean, it's okay. And mute had a a, a moon like reference in it. Yeah, too. it's in the, it's in the same one, universe, right? but not a sequel or yeah, sequel or any of that. Right. right definitely. Right. Takes yeah, we place talked after about that moon. one a while ago. Um, yeah, we did. If I remember correctly, I think that it was just a tad too long. Like I thought that it should have uh, wrapped it up a, about twenty minutes earlier, and not necessarily premise was cool. Not necessarily have like the the way that the ending kind of continued on. Um, like I get it. They, I think they could have resolved it a little earlier. Uh, but uh, yeah, good premise and stuff like that. It, it was a huge passion project of his, um, and I think that he probably had a hard time letting go of certain things in the editing room, but. Um, yeah, I liked seeing Ant Man as a as a dick, dude. Yeah. He was fucking awesome in that movie. Yeah, he was great. He was the Ant Man, the dude for the leftovers. Yeah, Justin Thoreau. Yeah, when he's like, yeah. "If I catch you doing this again, I'm gonna break your arms from your shoulders to your fucking fingertips." 
<laughs> You're yeah. like, oh, Ant Man. He on. played such a pedophile. I mean, he did, Justin Thoreau did a that great job. It's just so creepy. Yeah, uh, yeah, dude. I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, I need to give it another go. But uh, yeah, it's it's still well made. It was better than Warcraft. I like I like that a lot too, though. I so just, I missed that one. Little quick tangent, but still on this movie. Do you think longer movies that are a little passion projecty? <laughs> are harder to watch the first time at home as opposed to like a little theater? It's a good question. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it just depends on, on, you know, what you're looking for and kind of what you're into. Um, in certain movies, you know, they kind of beg that theater experience. Yeah. Not, so, yeah, not even for like loud you know. explosions or anything, but just for no. like you're out. Cause well, um, my wife and I go to a place called the film bar. I think I brought it up last time, but we watched a lot of, uh, smaller indie films that are slow as shit there, but it you're more apt to watch it and absorb the movie as you're sitting out in a public space, drinking a craft yeah. beer, watching some artistic guy just, I don't know, jerk off in your face with yeah. his art. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I could bring back 2001. I saw that in the theater recently and it's completely different in the theater. I mean, it's just a different yeah. vibe overall. It's meant to be shown on a big screen. So I think things like that work really cool. Yeah. Like in a separate environment. Something with having like the, you're, you paid for the ticket. So you're going to pay attention a little more. Cause like right. when I saw yeah. 2001, it was already 10 minutes into it on HBO sleeping. <laughs> well, well, one other thing uh, I would monkeys. say that uh, I'm not necessarily uh, proud of, uh, <laughs> I have a hard time. Like even with movies, I really love just like put the phone away, you know, like, uh, yeah. manage the distractions. Damn it. Like it's, a. Uh, I I could fall into that a little too easy sometimes at home. So I would agree that if a movie kind of you should allow yourself on this ride you know uh i need to manage the distractions better at times so i i would say that that is a fair call out that um if you gave it the right you gave it a chance then uh you probably wouldn't be as critical exactly. because you know what i mean like uh, some of that's on me <laughs> yeah. that makes sense yeah because i that's our modern age i just know that yeah. that same film bar place we watched some like weird medieval movie with Mads Mikkelsen and I Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. If you, watching that right, at man. home with the distractions of like phones going off and stuff, I probably would have thought of it way differently. So that's what just came up with mute since it released on Netflix instead of anywhere else. Man, yeah. Mads is rad. <laughs> Mads is rad. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What was that movie that you saw? Was it, uh, yeah. oh, um, fuck. how, how long ago was this? You think it was like three, Islander? three years ago. You're probably talking like um, the salvation, maybe. Maybe it was uh, like in a completely different language with all fucking subtitles. Huh? Valhalla, Valhalla Rising. No, that one is where we first saw Mads the first time. Okay. Yeah, not he, Men and Chicken. He's been in. <laughs> he's been in a couple. Age of Uprising. Yeah, he was in Salvation. Charlie Countryman. That kind of looks like it could be. A, Dude, that movie's awesome know. too, though. That's a good Shia LaBeouf joint. <laughs> Not sci-fi. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, watch it. It's awesome. Yeah. Put that All on right. a list to watch for something else. It's not sci-fi or anything, but, you know. Yeah. How dare you mention it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Moon. Good call out, right? I'm going to check yeah. that off over yeah. here. All right. Um, I'm going to throw one up that um, I think was probably the first it was, sci-fi movie. Oh, sorry. It was Age of I, of Uprising that I watched in that, Age of Uprising, in that right? bar okay. movie nice. place. Good, good, nice. Um, so the one I'm going to throw up next is probably one that uh, it's a Spielberg movie um, who kind of strayed away from sci-fi for a bit and kind of came back uh, would be a Minority Report. Yeah, I have that. Oh fuck, I forgot uh, about that one. Yeah, it's 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 a a sci-fi blockbuster in the respect that it's an original story for from a movie. It wasn't you know a lot of sci-fi is the problem of rehashing old things. And so it was nice, refreshing. There's a really cool premise kind of introduced the world to Colin Farrell, um, where he didn't have his accent and stuff like that. Kind of just a little <laughs> punk. Um, and it, but the thing that, that kind of bugged me in that movie is, um, Tom Cruise's uh, son is named Sean and he's yelling oh, that name. Like you have half the movie. I, Sean! Yeah. 
I, it's just weird like, hearing what? your name what? yelled. I don't know what it is. What do you want? I know <laughs> it's uh it's just weird hearing your name like in that kind of context. Sure. But uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a great movie. And then the dude from uh, Big Lebowski, that's like the, the eye surgeon guy. He was great. Uh, oh, what's yeah. his name, Ryan? Come on. Um, <laughs> or not he's Big in, Lebowski? He's in, Fargo. I'm thinking. Far- yeah, Fargo. I don't know his name, but yeah, he's the Swedish guy in Fargo. Yeah, that dude is yeah. so creepy. He was the cable repairman in Seinfeld, too. Yeah. Obscure reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Minority Report's great. It's, Spielberg's yeah. definitely got that sci-fi gene in him, um, and he keeps coming back and spitting some of those out, like he did with AI, which didn't really quite hit with me. Um, but, yeah. I, re- I think uh, I really liked AI for like a two-year stretch, and then I completely wiped it from my hard drive. Like, yeah. I forgot about it, too. You said, AI... <laughs> Yeah, t- yeah, I know. The I see dead people kid was kind of a, I don't know. It's a weird time of my life just watching AI and Vanilla Sky over and over again. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's another deep cut I forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing them back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah I, I mean, I'll watch it again to check it out, but uh, the it's been a while since I've seen seen that one. But not as great. But I like Minor- Minority Report. Uh, I dig that one. Um, the the little weird uh wooden ball that prints out the code that tells them who's who to go check out or whatever. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Then well got- there's a lot of things in that movie that are also uh like the you know, the virtual reality little hands moving the thing around on the screen. Yeah. Like, that's a huge like pop culture reference. The way that the cars are moving mm-hmm. is very like Elon Musk esque, like the el- tunnels he's doing under LA with the way the cars and stuff transport. Uh, th- there's a lot of elements in that sci fi wise that are coming forward. Like, I just saw an ad um, uh, on the internet for these little things that look like uh, inhalers that people are taking, you know, THC. Uh, from yeah uh odorless and all that kind of stuff and it's like the same type of drug that's used in in minority report looks very much the same way yeah and that's uh, they also did the you're walking down the street that scans your face and gives you the ads that you are interested for shit you're interested in yeah and, and your experience is different than the person next to you yep that's kind yeah, of that's, how, a good call that's kind of what social media same is writer, doing uh, <laughs> with our phones and stuff same writer as all those other Philip K. Dick, I think, wrote Minority Report, and he he also wrote uh, Total Recall, ah. Man in the High Castle, and uh, Blade Runner. Ooh, well, there you go. That's why it's good. Yeah, so yeah, he wrote all those stories basically. So yeah, and there's also just uh, um, the, the whole the whole precog theme, and like that that can be the harder part for people to kind of wrap their head around. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a really cool cool story, and it's well made. Um, Check it out if you haven't seen it in a while. It's a good one. Yes, sir. Nice. It's not as good as the movie that Ryan's about to drop. Oh no! I think it's Matt. I think it's Matt's turn. Is it my Ryan, turn? Matt? Is it my turn already? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Sure. Uh, so can I do it? Uh, well, it's basically you want to do a double feature. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I much I wrote down District Nine slash Elysium. I oh, okay okay. I have the Luke ben- Besson. Luke Besson. Luke Besson. Luc Besson. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Fifth Element slash Valerian. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have Fifth Element on my list. Yeah, yeah. that dude. I haven't seen Valerian. Uh, Valerian is basically, it, you could picture it being in the Fifth Element world. Nice. Yeah, it's it it, it just came out, fuck, like six months ago on, on yeah. Blu-ray. Okay. Yeah, but Fifth that, Element. So how, how is that movie, like, uh, Valerian? I think it's awesome. There's one little weird musical part with Rihanna in it, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's also yeah. a musical part in the fifth element. So I guess you can't fault it there. So, yeah. um, Oh, that's true. Yeah. But he's got the bright color, like fun dystopian future angle down. Like he, <laughs> he has his own point of view for sure. Yeah, and he, I guess he didn't make much in between those two because they made it like this is the next fucking Luke Basson movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah I remember yeah. seeing the uh, the posters and stuff, and it looked. I didn't. I didn't know anything about it, but um, I'm definitely willing to give it a shot for sure. Yeah, watching it without any of um, 
I don't know, any preconceptions about it, it's probably better because you'll just let it happen to you. And you're like, oh, this is fun. This is awesome. Yeah. It looks cool. The, the CGI is awesome. But I wouldn't have known that guy at all unless it was the fifth element. And that movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yes, it yeah. is. And a lot of people hate it, apparently, I'm learning from my podcast. It's a good movie. <laughs> uh, Has uh, Dylan seen it yet? This motherfucker. He f- <sighs> we were supposed to have a tribute run on this movie because uh-huh. it took him three times to get through it because he was having like a really fucked up week at work. He gave it a yeah. three, and I was like, motherfucker, this is one of my favorite of all times. So you've got to try it again. <laughs> I dare you. I, yeah, if you want to know who I am as a person, watch this movie. <laughs> and if you don't get it, you hate me. It's fucking Die Hard yeah. in space with fucking well, hot ass chick wrapped in bro- fucking bandages. Got the, got yeah, the, pretty got much. the dreads on. Yeah, it's when Bruce Willis' <laughs> stock was soaring. Yeah, dude. That dude. I don't know. Just the way that dude makes movies and like his visual design, like the super stacked, yeah. the super stacked city that just like New York just keeps building up. Gary Oldman's great in that too. Yeah, Zorg. It's different kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's cool. He's cool. It's just a. It's a very like visionary type of film where you don't really see it. Ian Holmes in it. Yeah, too, his, I think he was in a. His movies you know, have a fun amount of camp in them, like intention, yeah. intentional camp where he knows what he's doing, instead right. of like that shitty like oh it's campy because they don't know what the fuck's up. So right, it's got know. a cool adventure uh, vibe to it. I like that about his movies is the the pace and the excitement. They're not, they don't take themselves too serious. So it's like fun. Yes. So I, I think the, yeah, that's a good call out. Watch, watch Valerian this week. And you'll be, you'll notice it's, it, it almost seems like those movies can be within the same universe. If that makes, okay. if that makes sense. So no, absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to lean a little more into talking about fifth element, but Valerian needs to be mentioned as well. Cause like I said, yeah, fifth element's fifth my element favorite come out. 95 i think yeah. yeah it i don't know it took me a while to see that one i don't know why <laughs> yeah i know i didn't see it right away i wasn't going to the movies a whole lot in 95 oh, no, 97 um, 97 okay yeah yeah but, that's a good one but i swear like the color palette and everything's just completely like if you could photoshop like your your preset settings he just dumped it on that, valerian yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's his uh lut <laughs> yeah it's a t- <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right so, yeah I, I wouldn't want to talk too much about it since you haven't seen it so watch it because it's it's fun okay and okay so go. yeah the um i think i was i didn't i didn't see valerian because i watched that one by the wachowski um siblings um that uh <laughs> jupiter had, ascending oh yes this, that one scar- oh. scarred me and uh, Cloud Atlas, no, and that seen, one as well. I haven't seen Cloud yeah. Atlas, but uh, my wife and I watched Jupiter Ascending, and we're like, "This fucking thing." What is did she think? Garbage. It, it was so that. bad. I can't believe it got funded. <laughs> <laughs> Those dudes lost their mind like halfway through making Matrixes. They had one good hit that didn't really even age well. And then, yeah. I mean, was that on was speech, that on your list? No, <laughs> no, I didn't put Matrix yeah. on my list because I, I no. from from a, a cultural impact and a movie making thing, it, it, it was very important. Um, but it, it's people romance that movie way too much. Yeah, the whole trilogy just kind of sucks. I mean, the second and third you don't even yeah. need. No, um, again, yeah, I don't know. I, it's one of those movies I put on in the background, muted for a light to create an interesting looking thing on my wall. Yeah, you want some green <laughs> in your apartment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think too much romance on it. Um, it was really cool to see it in the theater. It had like that sixth sense type of element to it, but like the hook is such a strong part of what makes that movie good. That movies yeah. that rely on a hook like that, um, you know they don't have as much staying power, I think. So well, I don't know. That's just my, my opinion. I mean, those guys proved that they kind of didn't know what they were doing with Jupiter ascending <laughs> yeah, or cloud Atlas. I mean, it's worth They're watching done. cloud Atlas to see, like if we give me Tom Hanks, how can, what can we do with him? Yeah. Tom Hanks. Like, I haven't seen nothing. it at all. I haven't even seen the trailer yeah. for that. It's Captain Phillips. In, it. It's Captain Phillips in space. Oh shit. I am the captain now. Yeah. He looks very similar to Captain Phillips other than like all like spaced out. 
And if I remember the premise, it's he continues <laughs> to have um, he gets, reincarnates within himself. Uh, and same with Halle Berry's character, who she's like the other person. So it oh, takes Christ. place over like hundreds of years. Uh. And they keep playing <laughs> themselves at different it's moments in time epic. that are trying uh. to like find each other or something like that. Ryan just made the sound of disgust that I had in my head before I did it, so I stopped. (laughs) (laughs) I vocalized it. Yeah. Right as I thought it, I hear him go, ugh. Uh, uh, Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's worth watching just to kind of see, like, I mean, it's a good-looking movie. There's a lot of cool creativity going into it, but the story just doesn't hold up. Yeah, their movies look fine, but. I know. Yeah, I mean, sucked. Speed Racer looked rad, but it just it sucked. And they made that yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it looks cool. It looks really that. cool. Yeah, you'd probably dig. Like, if you want to put a movie on in the background, like put that one on. It's really cool looking. I fucking but hated outside the side of the racing so like, stuff. Fuck your movie. <laughs> I know. I know. Not a fan of the cartoons either. Because uh, they always say a bunch of things fast to go. Ha ha. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm going to say a bunch of things real uh-huh. fast in order then. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, all right. Who's up? Uh, I think I'm yep. up. Yeah. Th- this is a, a couple more deep cuts, and I only really put these down because oh, I don't like watch these no, still. No, I haven't don't, seen don't, them No while. bumpers. Just go right into it. All right. Um, two movies, Strange Days and Mad City. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember these or not, but yeah, uh, yeah, nope. I, mean, I don't know if they're great. I don't know if they're great movies. Strange but, Days uh, sounds familiar. Yeah, basically with Strange Days, it's like with uh, brain implants, and they're kind of it, it's in a future dystopian it's, movie. They're kind of sold as drugs. Um, is that the isolation really tank movie with Strange Days or no? No, that's um, I know what you're talking about. Uh, no, uh, Strange Days, Ray Fines, and um, yeah, that's oh, Catherine so, really, Bigelow, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. James Cameron wrote it. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you yeah, go. They were really married trippy. during that time. I still, I believe. Okay. Yeah, just kind of like two really kind of trippy Cameron movies, fan. but I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. So all I know about it is it's, it's a sexy kinetic thriller. Oh. <laughs> 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 Fucking prawns. <Yeah>. Fucking <laughs> prawnsman. <laughs> prawnsman. <laughs> 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 okay, what was the yeah, other one? Yeah, what was the other That's one? That's uh, Mad Mad City. Hmm. Mad City. Yeah, I think uh, Dennis Hop Dennis Hoffman's in it. You know, I'm not like I'm not totally <laughs> together on the plot. I'm kind of lost on this one, but it's like a futuristic like society with Travolta and Hoffman. Of, no, no, no. Travolta's not in it. Yeah, Dennis he, Hoffman. Uh, Dennis yeah, Hoffman. Yeah, Travolta's <laughs> in it. Ah, John Travolta, okay. Dustin Hoffman, <laughs> Mad City. Uh, it's yeah. Dennis Hoffman. Uh, Mad, si- Mad City or no, no, no. Okay, I have the wrong movie. Dark City. Oh, okay. there you I was go. like, you call, ah, call it a Travolta okay. cut? What's going to be next? Is yeah. the uh, Battle, yeah. Battle <laughs> Star Earth, Earth or what is that? <laughs> yeah, ba- oh. What's that called? That <laughs> well, the, 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 the Travolta fucking Scientology yeah, one? what's that it's called? Battlefield Earth. That'll feel yeah. <laughs> not on any of our lists, but a little sidetrack is... on that one real quick. I saw that. Yeah, hit it. I saw that in the theater and I snuck in a 30 pack of cores in a backpack <laughs> and it could, it could, it couldn't save the movie. It was me and one, f- oh, it was geez. me and one friend and it was only us in the theater and we were, oh. we were throwing full beer cans at the screen. I was very young. <laughs> 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 we're like wait a minute we're we a hot mess we didn't understand yeah. that like science like movies would be like religious propaganda at times if you let I it know <laughs> totally and, but we caught on to it, it we caught on to it very fast and we're like fuck this thing man uh, so, this anyway go on about dark yeah. city 2.4 yeah. out of 10 on imdb <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck all right dark city or, uh, not mad yeah. city <laughs> Yeah, Dark City, uh, 1998 movie. It's a um, guy wakes up in a hotel room and he's wanted for a bunch of murders and he can't remember anything. Um, it's just kind of like a mystery movie crossed up with a uh, science fiction movie. And Kiefer Sutherland's in this one. He's really kind of a creepy guy. So I don't know. It's, it's worth checking out. It's um, 
one of those one of those futuristic semi dystopian films. It's not terrible, I, but you know, I haven't seen it in a while. Might see it again. It got a pretty high rating on IMDb. Yeah, I actually just bought the Blu-ray for this, but still haven't seen it. Ah, ah, yeah. yeah so um, yeah, it's it's different. Super interested in it. Yeah, different movie. Yeah, see, deep cuts, Ryan Harsh. Yeah. <laughs> Brought him back. All right. I'm going to bring up another one here uh, that I think if the soundtrack was any different, I might have different feelings about it. Uh, this is another Tom Cruise movie, Oblivion. Oh, nice. I haven't seen this movie. Oh, you haven't. No. It's, well, well, well. It's better yeah, than I thought well. it was going to be when I saw it. Better, yeah. Better it, than Battlefield <clears throat> Earth. Oh. So here, here's why I like this movie. <laughs> oh. It is... Um, it's a very isolated movie. It has a really good premise and, um, it's got some cool twists and stuff like that. It gets a little soft in the end. It doesn't have a strong, it doesn't close completely as strong as it could. Um, and you kind of think you're watching that dystopian type of, uh, sci-fi movie, but then it gets like super, you know, um, hard science fiction near the end. Um, and it kind of converts like, okay, this is definitely a sci-fi movie. Uh, yeah. cause it goes in directions you just did not see coming. Um, but in the meantime, it's still very entertaining and I think just it's shot very well. It's very beautiful. Yes, um, it is. and the music is rad by M 83. Uh, just, I yeah. went and saw them at the Hollywood bowl and they played some cuts from it. It was just, it's really good. So I, I enjoy it. It's not the greatest sci-fi movie. I just, I just really like it. I spend that soundtrack once a week at work. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I have it on vinyl. Nice. They, they ship this, uh, clear vinyl for the soundtrack. So it's kind of oh, really shit. cool theme. That, um, that little space, uh, I gotta watch that, it. It sounds good. That little ship he has to travel around his little sector is fucking awesome. Like the way it works. Yeah. The little pod. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, check it out, Ryan. You'll you'll definitely yeah. uh, you'll be entertained oh, by it. I think it. Morgan Freeman's also in that one as well. Nice, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, so Oblivion. That's another uh, one of the good ones. <laughs> I think it's the only last Tom Cruise what? one on my list. Samuel L. Jackson's somewhere <laughs> like in there because he's in all things. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this goddamn sphere out this motherfucking plane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn it! All right. All right. What do you uh, Matt's up? Uh, Gattaca. Oh, yeah. Ethan Hawke? Yep. That's a good, good one. Good movie. Yeah, yeah, dude. So so I don't remember a whole lot of the, the premise on that. All I remember is like some hair in a keyboard that had something to do with something. The the, uh, the Gattic, I'm going to explain this terribly, but the Gattaca program is to get off world and start exploring space. And they only want the best of the best. And his DNA does not uh, compute with their test. So he buys the DNA of like Jude Law, which who fucking wouldn't? Am I right? Yeah, yeah no, no. Right? it's hot. <laughs> yeah, what a hunk. Yeah, so who says hunk anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Betty Grable type yeah. of dish. <laughs> so it's kind of suspenseful. Hubba hubba. It's kind of suspenseful because uh, uh, he's like <laughs> he's fighting the he's fighting the against getting caught. Most of the movie he falls in love with Uma Thurman. Fucking. That's right. Okay. Yeah. It, like is uh, he has to have like a leg operation, right? The, like, <laughs> doesn't he have to have like long? Like, no, he has to have like longer legs or shorter legs or oh, something is like he, that. Like augmenting himself. Yeah, yeah, right. I gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, that oh, movie, the you know, cinema. The, a lot of these sci-fi movies, I always notice myself being like the cinematography and color palette they cho- they chose is fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the so, designer yeah. eye in you kicks in. Yeah, so <laughs> maybe that's why I check out on some of the fucking other things. I'm like, so looking at 2001 spaceships, like, that's awesome. What's happening now? <laughs> yeah, now what? Now what? No, now what? So, yeah, that, nice, good cut. That movie's yeah, fucking great. Good soundtrack. Yeah, good. I need to watch that again. Young I hot like hunks movie. doing young hot hunk things. Hunks. Yeah, <laughs> hunks. <laughs> hunks. <laughs> Yeah, as Matt would say, nothing but hot dudes with thick tubes. Yeah, dude, the thickest of tubes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see it, Ryan. Uh, this is obvious one. Um, another pair, Blade Runner and the new Blade Runner. Yep. Yeah. Did I you mean, see twenty four? Really did to. you see twenty forty nine, Matt? Uh, no, I just bought it for ten bucks though. Great Blu ray. Yep. Digital nice. and everything at Target. 
I I need to watch it. I've watched it twice. Um, we we did a whole episode on that. I think it was like our third episode. Uh, yeah. I think it's gonna be like one of my top ten movies of all time. Like it's it's yeah, it's aging it. very well, and it hasn't been out that long. But uh, I really like that movie. Um, but Ryan, you also talked a lot about the original one and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Did you ever go see that one in the theater, like the 2001 style as well? No, I haven't seen that one come out yet, but I would love to see it in the theater. And, you know, there's like a lot of different cuts to it. So like Ridley Scott, like he did a, a cut with the narration and then one without and then with a different ending. But, you know, I, I think it works well without the narration. You don't really need to have everything explained to you. Good. But it's it's kind of like one of those last movies before they started doing like real CGI. So it's kind of cool to see it. Very organic. Which is, you know, kind of like what Matt was saying. It's shot, you know, differently with like kind of that 70s sci-fi sensibility, which is cool as well. Yeah. I used the background yeah. sound of his apartment for the entirety of like one of the songs I've made. <laughs> it just goes nice. the entire time as like creating ambiance. Yeah. They use nice. it a lot in the new movie. Do they really? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's cool. It's cool. The new movie's rad. I think it's, I mean, it's one of the best movies I've seen in a long time where you're just like, I didn't go see it in the theater. I don't know why. Um, and I instantly regretted it. I was like, I should have seen this in IMAX because it was during the season, <laughs> yeah. like when nothing else came out. That movie is just incredible. It's incredible. That, that director, he did another uh, great sci-fi movie, but he's also doing a uh, Dune reboot. And I don't, I don't really know anything about Dune. I don't know if you know anything about it, Matt. I watched but. it a long time ago, and I couldn't tell you what the fuck yeah. happened in it, other than it looked yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. I, I yeah. always get Dune confused with like Wrath of Khan. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, like a lot of it just looks kind of looks the, the same. Sand, yeah, just the like sand the, planet that they're stuck on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Khan. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on yeah. my list. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath of Khan's on your list. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh wow. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I was like, I'll pick one Star Wars movie and I pick Trek, one Trek, uh, Trek, please. One Star Trek <laughs> movie. So yeah. my Star. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> so <laughs> starting <they> off. <laughs> yeah. So my Star Wars was Empire. My Star Trek. Matt is uh, Wrath of Khan. It's just a memory of that that worm going in uh, Chekhov's ear. Dude, that movie's very traumatic, dude. That movie's very fucking traumatic. great. Those old movies. Yeah. I I would say. Those old movies from the original cast are better than all of the next generation movies. Yeah. But only the isn't, e- the, bad, isn't the bad guy the same dude from Labyrinth? Um no Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> he has yeah, some... looks like the, he looks like David uh, Bowie in Labyrinth. I just know him. Yeah, I just know him from Fantasy Island and Naked Gun. He has some it. sick Camaro <laughs> hair in it though. Yeah, yeah, he does. Looks, yeah, it looks like a bird of prey. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Yeah, uh, no, that, yeah, that movie good, holds anyway. up still too. If you're not a yeah. dumb asshole, that's like the CG's not like the thing I saw in the theater yeah. last week. Yeah, that's still true. a good movie. I, I like to watch that one again. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta start working through all these Star Trek. I think it's like it's, it's almost like my character study on like what is Matt seen and I'm not. All, you know? all the even number original Star Trek cast movies are good. I think that's the, okay. I think that's the rule. That's. That's the math equation. I think that's the math equation. They figured it out okay. on even number releases. Even the one with the whales? I think that's three. I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, I think you're wrong is on that, that one. I think well, three is the one where four. Spock dies. People love yeah. the whale one, though. Okay, yeah. People love the, the whale whales. one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's one of the whales in it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, yeah. I'm going to throw out um, probably the first sci-fi type movie that probably like scared me as a kid that I can remember, ah. uh, which I don't really get scared by movies. I remember it just kind of creep me out and I just didn't really understand it, but that would be the thing. Oh, uh, oh, so yeah, this wasn't on my list, but Oh, so good. That, so that's one that's, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. I've seen it a handful of times. It's, you know, definitely a sci-fi movie in that respect, but it doesn't feel like a science fiction movie. No. It feels more like a horror movie. Um, I just think that it's, you know, Kurt Russell's amazing in it and there's a lot to kind of interpret in a different way. Um, it's just a trippy movie. I don't know. I, that movie's yeah. great. It to- the it, effects are cool. It's totally science fiction though. I don't know what, do you, do yeah. you have to yeah, just, I, are you thinking sorry, like it has to be in space for it to be a science fiction movie? No, not at all. Not at okay. all. But it, it, to me, like when you watch it, like the horror elements just outweigh 
like the story premise to where you you just kind of believe it right away. Gotcha. Um, I don't really like susp- like I don't really look because if the sci fi elements were too strong, then the horror elements wouldn't work. Gotcha. Uh, at le- you know what I mean? So like that's like I see Alien. I don't see think Alien as a sci fi movie. Um, totally is simple, though, but yeah, but it totally is. Yeah, yeah. It, and that's just how you it know it's well done. It kind of matches up a lot of other elements. Which yeah, is cool. yeah. We're like you could really like, play with the genre, you know. Like Minority Report or Blade Runner are very sci fi because you see things that you're like, I just have to believe that that's something you know that is possible in your universe. Whereas like in the thing, um there really isn't those kind of elements. Like you don't really understand what the thing is. So yeah. you don't really know, like, I don't know. You just don't really know what it, to make. It looks of it. cool as fuck. I like that movie yeah, so it much. It ages very well. Yeah. I never yeah. even checked out the reboot. I haven't it's either. Good and it's, it's not so much a reboot because they, um, they, the way, it, the way it ends is with the dog getting away. And that's how the, the old one starts. Mm. So it's kind of like what happened in the other camp, you know, and gotcha. then whatever. but it's not bad. I mean, the video it's, game it's, was pretty cool. That's what I was just going to bring uh, up. I, I like that movie so much. I've binge watched it a bunch. I beat that video game. I've used the poster as dumb, <laughs> like flyer art for my stupid shitty bands. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Like that movie's fucking awesome. Yeah. I love that movie. And it was on my nice. list, but now I could check it the fuck off. Yeah, nice. yeah, check off. Yeah, Doug's back to Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> it always goes back to Star Trek. Uh, all right, I think Matt's up. I have a non spacey science fiction movie, and it's Flatliners. Oh, yeah, I had that too. The remake or the. No, the remake's no, not no, done no. yet. <laughs> I think there's Ellen Page. Oh, she yeah, she right. gonna be in it, I guess. But yeah. The original fucking Flatliners is a pretty creepy movie. Yeah. And it's it's a good premise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the remake came out last year. Oh, it's already out? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it, so. It, it came out last year. Um and it got and terrible Page, reviews. Diego Luna. <laughs> Diego Luna. That's why I didn't think it was out because it came out to uh, to nobody. Yeah, Keeper's yeah. in it too. Is it a continuation? I don't know. Much it's like a, the thing, I didn't even care because I liked the first one so much. Yeah, same here. Yeah, it's yeah Joel, that's a good movie. I it, like the premise of it. Yeah. It's Joel Schumacher before he fucking shit all over Batman, <laughs> <Uh-oh>. dude. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, see, now that's my, a good call out. I mean, he went from flat liners Dying young, falling down, so he's still kicking ass. Then Batman Lost Boys forever. Before that, yeah, Lost yeah, Boys is fun, yeah, but fucking yeah, this. Everybody likes Lost Boys from the theme song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your name, Star? God damn it! Star. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the, the whole like getting people to near death experiences and they're bringing shit back with them is fucking. Yeah. Goddamn terrifying. Which is, which is kind of like a real premise in the, in regards of like how um astral projection works because they say that people that do astral projection um uh, where you go in the other realm and you're conscious but your body is still um if you're not careful you're bringing uh, shit back. Uh, you can bring shit back with you and so what happens is a lot of people that go crazy people believe that they're subconsciously astrally projecting um uh, when they're sleeping. Um yeah. It's something that like the Nazis and the Russians have done serious like investigation on to spy. Um, And you could check it out where there's like research where somebody in a locked room uh, who claims they can do astral projection where you can be anywhere at any point in time. uh, Your consciousness is basically through like a, you know, a tethered uh, spirit body. Yeah. uh, Go can go in another room and like, look at certain like numbers written on pieces of paper on a table that they can't see. And then when they wake up, they'll tell you what they saw. And they they do crazy, like a lot of tests that prove that it is a a valid possible thing. Yeah. Um, That's kind of some of the premise that like flatliners kind of brings back to is when you cross over. Yeah. uh, Very similar in a lot of respects, but it's a, it's a rad movie. That shitty red hooded kid. Go yeah. fuck yourself. <laughs> I, don't, I know they're like bullying him or whatever to death, but goddamn it. 
Yeah. Leave him alone in the future. <laughs> Leave him alone. Yeah. yeah All right, good. Ryan, you're up. All right, my list is dwindling. Yeah, we're almost there. Over here. Um, this is a movie where, uh, well, I'll bring this one up because we brought up the same director. Uh, I really like The Arrival. Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't know this. There's two of them. There's another one with Charlie Sheen. No, that one's uh, terrible. Yeah. The backward yeah, knees. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's the same one or not, but it's just a cool looking movie. It's like it's the sound is really <laughs> is awesome when you kind of jack one. it up. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> well, that, that one's called The Arrival. Ah, and then the one you're talking about is just Arrival. Yeah, okay. So I like Arrival, not with the D in front of it. Yeah, yeah, good movie. I don't know what you guys think. About yeah, no, it. She, I like it. It's where just, she learns to communicate through time and space yeah. and ether with yeah. those fucking those beings and the cloudy wall yeah <laughs> yeah cool just like you know like outer space you know contact with aliens type of movie yeah and the whole way they twist time on that one's cool too yeah it also spawns some funny memes where she's holding up the little sign to them and it says like do you like yeah. corn <laughs> <That's> <laughs> do you like corn band, <laughs> like the logo of the band that's oh, so stupid. stupid but god damn it do you like blumpkins yeah no <laughs> yeah. uh we saw that in the theater and it was fucking awesome yeah, uh, I think uh, yeah. Cheyenne uh, said posted something like, I don't know what you're doing right now, but you need to go see it. Yes. I was like, you got it. And so I went and saw it because yeah. I saw that. And when I bought awesome. when I bought her the Blu-ray, she was like, oh, thank you. Fucking thank you. Yes, that's a great one. <laughs> yeah. It's a good pull, Ryan. Yeah, good yeah, pull. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, nice. Um, all right. Not so the Charlie Sheen one. <laughs> I've got just a couple more. I'll, I'll figure I'll we'll each throw out one more, and then I'll just kind of – you know, uh, the couple I'm just going to mark off because because they're on there. Like the we talked a lot about them on this podcast, which would be like Mad Max is one of the ones I wanted to just kind of check off the new ones. The old ones, Mel Gibson are still fun, but yeah. Um, and then the other ones I had on here, which we kind of did talk about, was was Planet of the Apes. Um, so the last one I'm going to throw out there that I really enjoyed was uh, Twelve Monkeys. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and that's on my list. Yeah, that's one of the ones where. Um, it's just confusing as shit to follow if you're not paying attention. But when it starts to kind of reveal itself, uh, that's when you really, you don't, you know, that's when you really start to appreciate it. I think you go into it, like just kind of along with the ride and, and the craziness of the characters, like their experience is similar to your experience as a viewer until you kind of understand what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I like movies that can make you feel the way, that the character is kind of experiencing the movie at the same Very time. Very disorienting. Oh, yeah. 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 And Brad Pitt was great in that. And that's one of the first, like, movies where Brad Pitt, I'm like, yeah, he's not, like, just the, you know, the, the star of the moment. Like, he can actually play this, like, insane kind of person in this movie. Yeah, he had some made acting it kind of, made it kind of funny. Yeah, totally. So. Because he's a, he's a good actor, but he he's he doesn't really do a lot of character acting. Yeah, it doesn't stretch out as much. Uh, so that one's a little bit more of a his effort, I think, with character acting. I think, mm-hmm. you know, physically and and all those elements. Right. Yeah, Bruce so, Willis. Yeah, that's mine. So then uh, Matt has one more, and and then Ryan will close it, and then uh, Ryan will close it out. All right, yeah. sounds good. Uh, it's not necessarily a movie, but everybody needs to go through this at least one time in your life. <laughs> Uh oh, the re the Uh-oh, the re imagining of Battlestar Galactica. Ah, is this a, like a the whole season or something? All the seasons that ever happened of the of re- the reboot <laughs> of all of it. You got, oh, you, okay. So I haven't seen a minute of Battlestar Galactica. Fuck the one um, from the eighties. <laughs> that one is trash. Okay. Edward James Olmos yeah, version. Edward. I was listening to Rogan today, and he was on with some sci-fi dude, and that guy Rogan was like, "It's amazing." I was like, "It's yeah." It blew my f- a lot of people like it, it. Blew my fucking mind back the entire time. There's a couple, um, you know, binge watching stuff that's not on TV because I cut the cord for cable like a decade ago. So it yeah. was on Netflix. I think it's on Hulu now. But uh, yeah, there's, I think there's four seasons of it but there's 25 episodes per season and some mid-season yeah. movies it's a it's a haul 
I'm kind of working on it like off and on, but it's, and there's like some, yeah, other movies in it too. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot to see, but it is cool. It's, it's very, uh, I can see why a lot of people can get into yeah, it. It's, there's a huge following, right? Yeah. It's deep and it goes far yeah. and the payoff's fucking rad. So a lot of like modern commentary too, right? Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Cause you know, the Cylons come back and they fucking destroy Spoilers. Yeah. They destroy uh no, it's the first episode. Oh. <laughs> they destroy all, right. all the planets basically where humans can exist. So all of humanity is basically on all these old ass ships, just fucking warping away from them time and time again. Um a lot of The Last Jedi, Star Wars The Last Jedi kind of has a little bit of a Battlestar Galactica feel when they're just like, they're barely out of reach of the enemy at all times in space. Hmm. Yeah. So I know it's not like, Hey, check out this hour and a half movie asshole. No, like you have to check out like fucking 57 hours of it, but <laughs> I I need something like that right now. Cause I'm running out of stuff to, to watch that. Yeah. That's kind of getting I, I me, might have to get back into getting that. me going. Yeah, no, you can, uh, it's, I believe it was on one of those stations where there's a couple fluff episodes because they have to fill out like an episode count, but even the fluff episodes are good, if that makes sense. Yeah, I got you. Whereas in the context, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, you know, where like as a Netflix thing, they can just decide, well, this season's five episodes and the next one's nine. Like, go fuck yourself. Like they had a quota. Yeah, they had a quota, but even the fluff episodes still are impactful in my opinion. So, yeah. and it CGI is great. Acting's great. Fucking everything looks great. So doesn't it have a quantum leap in it? What's his name? I don't Bocula. No, I don't think it's it. Got I, I don't think it does. I think he is. Uh, no. Okay. Could be wrong. You might be thinking of something else, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Um, no, you're thinking of yeah, fucking the, Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, that's uh, what I'm thinking of. All right. Yeah, there no, you go. That shows fucking Garbo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because the 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 guy that Rogan was talking to um, was a science. Uh, or he's a uh, scientist, basically at like uh-huh. Boston University, and he said that the the best sci fi series ever is The Expanse. Oh, that's a new um, thing that got canceled. Yeah, but but one. Amazon yeah. picked it up. Ah. And so you can watch it on Amazon the first two seasons and then the third season isn't free yet on Prime. Um but he said that it is something that is totally possible and in our near future. Um and so that's why he as a scientist enjoys it the, as much because of the the premise and things like that. But he also said the same thing like they're they're in the conversation of talking about Battlestar. So I added the expanse to my list. I was like, I'll check that out. But now I got yeah. Battlestar. So should I be watching <laughs> Battlestar before I go and do these next generations? Yes. Next generations okay. is uh, they're still good, but it's like kind of it's guilty pleasure. I just hang out with Picard and friends when I get off yeah. work. <laughs> but no, th- this, and <laughs> this movie uh, or, or not movie. Uh, this series is completely serious and awesome and it came out in 2004 there's four seasons three movies within those seasons and i oh think boy. i wow. i think they come up that's just a, as a heft. i think the movies come up split as episodes but they're like a locked in thing i could be wrong depends on how huh. how your streaming provider cut them up but gotcha yeah, it's to start watching these yeah yeah, because I remember watching it. I liked it, but I don't know why I stopped watching Dude, it. Dude, Edward. <laughs> uh, very cool. Edward James almost is awesome as fuck in it to where uh, back when I was plowing through these things, I would post like it was like some presidential campaign and I kept posting like his character with like this is who we should be having. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stupid. Nice. Look at you. Stu- yeah, there you go. Stupid memes. Yeah. Whatever. All right. All right, Ryan. Close it out. All right. This one, uh, I think Sean will like this one. It combines a couple of my favorite things, science fiction and martial arts, Big Trouble and Little China. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah a, right? That's an 80s classic. Yeah, it's just a fun movie. Um, same director as The Thing, so you got Kurt Russell's back in this one. Um, yeah, really like it. It's still fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, it is. Kind of weird, right? <laughs> yeah, with uh, Jack Burton. Jack Burton. Yep. 
Yeah, so that's that's my pick. It's uh, that's one of my Halo One know, names. Again, again, doesn't have to be in space, but you know, it's still really good. So that's my pick. Oh, nice, nice, good that's pick. All I say, yeah, it's a fun yeah. one. The uh, yeah, a lot of good lines in that that I don't remember, but uh, <laughs> you know, I got to see it again. Got the girl from Mannequin. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, so before we kind of close this out, what I wanted to do, just kind of like, uh, cap this off just for some perspective is we went into this and we just kind of wrote down, you know, off the top of our head, a lot of sci-fi movies that we kind of dug and just wanted to talk about it. So definitely curious to see what you guys think about this episode. If you like enjoyed this discussion or this format, a little bit different from what we usually do. Uh, but I wanted to go over two top 10 lists. Um, the one is the top 10, the, the highest rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes for sci-fi and see which ones we called out, which ones we missed. Oh shit. And then uh, top, the top 10 according to Rolling Stones with, uh, magazine. Wow. So not necessarily that there's some authority on this, but it's similarities yeah. a little bit different. So, uh, so the top 10 for Rotten Tomatoes uh, starting from number 10 is Wally. Nine is War for the Planet of the Apes. Eight is Star Wars: Last Jedi. Seven is Alien. Six is Arrival, not the Arrival with the backward knees guy. <laughs> Fucking backward knees. Tiger blood. <laughs> yeah. Five is uh, the Force Awakens. Sheen dinner. Number four is Gravity, which is atrocious. Uh, yeah, I didn't really care for that. I haven't um, seen that one because I don't care. It's, <laughs> don't worry it's, about it. Yeah. Uh, three is E. T. Uh, uh, two is Metropolis, which is some cut from 1927. I don't. Uh, yeah, it's a weird movie. I and, think I've actually uh, seen that, but I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. And the number one was Mad Max Fury Road, according to Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's a good list. Uh, so Rolling Stone has, um, which is a little bit more, a little more in the pocket in some respects. But uh, number ten was Force Awakens. Nine was The Martian. Uh, oh, good man, number, Demon. Yeah, eight. Uh, number eight was Twenty Eight Days Later. Seven yeah. was Gravity, and I was like, "Why is that movie making on the top ten? Um, yeah. Anyways, it's not a great movie. No. Number six was Wally. Five was Inception, which I did have on my list, but I was like, "I'm not going to get to it." If it's, you yeah, know. I have that uh, Interstellar, that but yeah, yeah. Uh, those ones are a little have mixed feelings about them. They're great movies, but there's a lot to, you know. Anyways, uh, four was Arrival. Three was Under the Skin, which I don't know of. Do you guys know of that that's, one? Uh, that's no. that's Scarlett Johansson. She's like an alien. Uh, drops down to Earth. She's like an alien. It's kind of like an arty type movie. Okay, like species. Good? She's naked in it though. <laughs> it's all right. I, I mean, yeah. I think I was watching. I was kind of falling. <laughs> She's, She's naked in it though. She's naked though. So titties, uh, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make your own decision here, God sir. She is naked though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's worth checking out. I think when I when I saw it initially, I was like kind of tired, so I didn't see the whole thing. But <laughs> she drops you down woke on up Earth. real quick. But she is she is naked in it. So drops down her left halfway like, through. What do titties <laughs> do? Uh, titties. <laughs> uh, uh, number anyway. <laughs> number two was Ex Machina, and yes. number one was Children of Men. Awesome! Wow. So that's that's what those guys had. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, 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 you know, Rotten Tomatoes definitely had the Star Wars ones up there, but I, I don't think they compete. I think Last Jedi absolutely does, ones. but Last Jedi is a good grab, one. Could take Gravity off there. Yeah, please. Really we didn't that. mention Alien. I know we talked about that before. You know, didn't really mention too much about Wally. I may have offhand. Uh, Martian, we didn't mention, or those other other ones. But the Martian covered not a lot of these. That great. It's it's yeah. Martian is like a modern um, Armageddon. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they, it's the same type of movie as Everybody's those movies. Everybody's pulling were. together. It's a little more polished. We're all pulling together to save this. So, it, you know, I don't know. Like, bringing all our experts. The way the trailers were, like you knew everything was fine the whole time. It was just gonna yeah, snap. you don't actually believe he's not going to make it back. Yeah, and that's Ridley Scott. You know, he did the he yeah. directed that one. It's like. I think that's what doesn't work about some of those movies is you kind of know, like, all right, you're going to be fine. Uh, yeah. And I think some of the best sci-fi movies are when the cast is not really that known. So yeah. you, 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 the director could do whatever they want with them. Uh, you don't have some connection, whereas you watch something like um, Inception, like, is Leo really going to die in this? I doubt it. <laughs> you nope. know? Sorry. Not yeah. that payroll. 
I don't have a huge problem with uh, big name actors. It's just the that that whole premise of that movie was explained within like a 30 second trailer and you're like, oh, he's fine. They're just going to go get him and you have to watch how it happens. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Him being a prick in Interstellar is like way, <laughs> way different. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. like it better. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, nice job guys. I had a lot of fun. We'll have yeah. to do this again yeah. for something, other type of genre or, or yes, just a specific movie that kind of comes out just to mess around. Yeah, so uh, before we go, um, Matt, remind everybody, go listen to his podcast. Where can they find you? NFHCpodcast.com. It stands for Not For Human Consumption Podcast. It is a weekly drunken update of everything. Movies, Uh, games, music, life, banter. It's like hanging out at a bar with your friends, I guess. Nice. Try it. Or two, two of them are <laughs> friends. And one of them is a host. Three friends with one host. <laughs> Non-host. <laughs> yeah, there's and... four people involved in this, and we bring in our friends. We've had Sean on a few times over the over yeah. the phone. Yeah, I call in from satellite. It's it's audible chaos. Audible chaos. Nice. <laughs> right on. Yeah, go check it out. A lot of fun. Um, so again, appreciate it. You guys stop by our website if you haven't. Uh, check this out already if it's your first time here welcome hopefully you stick around uh do us a big favor and head over to itunes uh, make sure you subscribe give us five stars if you enjoyed it it's just a nice way of saying I had a lot of fun appreciate the show and while you're at that head over to nfhc podcast go ahead and give them a listen dot com a lot of fun yeah uh that'll do it for this week episode 29 next one is number 30 don't quite know what we're doing yet let's see what we cook up you have uh, to have a drunken then, party like we did for ours Oh yeah, that was that was a hot mess. <laughs> Off the rails. <laughs> oh, oh, totally did. Was, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, good times. All right, so uh, that's it for this week, guys. My name is Sean. My name is Dennis Hoffman. God damn it, I'm Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good one. Fuck up one time. <laughs>